When Dave asked me to come speak to Rotary about concealed carry, at first I had to try to figure out what Rotary was. Because I, I really, I'd heard it a million times, but I really didn't know a lot about it. And so in, in approaching that, I started thinking, all right, well, I'm talking to a group of people who are business owners, and so you need to think about concealed carry from a business owner standpoint, while also talking to people that are citizens just like me, that are walking down the street as individuals, and you also need to consider concealed carry under that light as well. Uh, the state of Illinois, about two years ago, passed a law, Illinois 430 ILCS 66, which is the concealed carry law for the state of Illinois. Pursuant to that law, anyone who meets those requirements can take the appropriate training and apply for a concealed carry permit that's good in Illinois and all border states to Illinois. Now, certainly Illinois has no control over what states do and do not accept their permit. Other states do. It just so happens is that all the states that border Illinois, that touch Illinois, will honor Illinois' permit. And about 13 states in total, I believe. Uh, the best permit to get would be Florida. With Illinois and Florida, I think there's about 36 states that you can carry a firearm in. When I started approaching the idea of carrying concealed, I was talking to my partner at work one night. And uh, I had been a hunter safety instructor for a couple of years, and I enjoyed doing that. And I've been a competitive shooter for almost 15 years, and obviously I like doing that. I was talking to my partner, Brian Hopkins, and obviously he was talking about things that he wanted to achieve and wanted to do over the next couple of years, and I was doing the same. And one of mine was you know, getting my EMT and a few other things, and becoming a certified firearms instructor was one of those things. And so I been, began the journey of going through the NRA and traveling here and there, taking instructor certification courses to be able to teach the class. The state of Illinois, when they passed concealed carry, one of the requirements was that you are either an NRA certified instructor or a law enforcement type certified instructor before they will give you your certification to, to teach the classes for concealed carry. What I learned in that process is just because someone says they're an instructor doesn't make them an instructor. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that teach concealed carry that can't do what they're teaching their students to do. And so my first advice to anybody, if you're looking at or approaching to getting your concealed carry permit, interview your instructor. Ask them, what are your credentials <coughs> as a shooter? Not as an instructor, as a shooter. Tell me why you know how to shoot and why I should be paying you to teach me to shoot. <coughs> now, we're fortunate in this area. There actually are a lot of good instructors in this area, and there's some that are not so good. And you, it's your job to kind of wade through that as an individual <coughs> to make sure you get the best training possible to pursue it to a concealed carry permit. It's a very serious thing. The idea of taking another life, why would you do that? For what reason would you do that? You know, if you do it for a reason other than protecting your life or the life of another, you're probably not going to have a very good outcome. It'll haunt you for a long time. So if we're going to, if we're going to approach applying for a concealed carry permit, we're going to do this as an individual, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Before we start talking about what kind of gun are we going to buy, when you start talking about, you know, how are we going to approach this? What's going to be our mindset? You know, am I going to carry a gun every day? Am I just going to get a carry, a carry permit so I can carry a gun in the event that I need to? Well, if that's your mindset. If you're, if you're going somewhere that you think you might need a gun, my advice is to you not to go. <laughs> you know, call the police and let them know. You know, uh, concealed carry is, is really a way of life if you're going to start carrying a gun on a regular basis. It's, it's, it's a way of life. It's something you have to consider all the time. <coughs> Illinois has one of the most comprehensive, comprehensive training programs for concealed carry. Uh, many states, you can take a four-hour class, send in your money <coughs> and your training certificate, and within 90 days you'll get a permit for said state. Florida would be one. That's good in about 33 other states. Missouri would be one. Indiana would be one. I think Iowa now picks up Florida. There's not a terrific amount of training that goes into that. In Illinois, you will take an eight-hour basic training course, which fundamentally introduces you to the basics of handguns. We have revolvers. We have semi-automatics. We have single-action revolvers. We have double-action revolvers. We have single-action semi-automatics. We have double-action semi-automatics. And it really is an education process <coughs> that hopefully will allow you to choose what firearm best suits you. It's very basic. This is how you hold a gun. This is how you aim a gun. This is how you shoot a gun. This is the muzzle. And then we drive into you the three rules of gun safety. Keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. 
keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, and keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. It should be noted that you really have to fail three times to have any kind of negative incident with a firearm. <coughs> you have to fail on three different levels before you have any kind of reportable incident with a firearm. If that muzzle pointed in a safe direction and the gun accidentally goes off, it can't hurt anybody. If the gun's not pointed in a safe direction but it's not loaded, it's still not smart, but it really can't hurt anybody. And likewise, if your finger's not on the trigger and you fail on those two other instances, the gun's not, not going to hurt anybody. You know, most modern firearms are, are made overbuilt. They're like Volvos. You, know, you can pull them out and drive a nail with one loaded, and it's not going to go off. I mean, they're, they're incredibly safe. And that's what the first eight hours of your concealed carry training will consist of. You know, just the fundamental basics of this is a pistol. The second eight hours, you're going to spend a tremendous amount of time that instructs you on your interaction with law enforcement as someone who's carrying a gun concealed. Moreover, that you understand you are not law enforcement as someone who carries a gun concealed. It's not your job to try to intervene, to try to be a police officer, to jump up and help police officers. You know, that you're just putting everybody in harm's way when you do that. But it also, also covers what your rights are in the law in the use of lethal force to defend your life or the life of another person. And we spend a lot of time talking about that, the what ifs. And then the qualification for the state of Illinois is very, very comprehensive, more so than any other state that I've seen. Fundamentally, you have to qualify on the same qualification standard that a police officer has to qualify on, with the exception that you do not have to present from a holster, and you do not have the time constraints that a police officer does. He may have to shoot from this distance for the same score that you shoot, but he has to do it from a holster in two seconds or four seconds, and you don't have those time constraints for the state of Illinois. But it is the same qualification standard for law enforcement. And unfortunately, a lot of people go buy these little firearms like Dave was talking about that they, they market to individuals, especially women. They market these little raspberry and pink and, and Tiffany blue guns to women that are little bitty light guns. And women buy them and come to class and then they can't shoot them because they're a very small gun with a tremendous amount of recoil. And they're not very shooter friendly and they can't qualify with them. And so, it's really good when you come to that first class and we spend time talking about, hey, what's your reason for buying a gun? These are the things you need to look at. And you'll get to handle and hold a lot of different guns so you can make an informed efficient decision when you go buy one. So then when you do have to qualify with your gun, you can shoot it accordingly. The state mandates 30 rounds at distance of a 5, 7, 10 yards to qualify on a B27Q target which means the target area that you're trying to hit at those distances is about this wide and about this tall. It's not a small area, roughly the size of a torso of a human being. And that's where your shots have to go, and you have to get 70% 70, <coughs> 70 to be able to carry a gun in the state of Illinois. It's ironic to me when I look at, at places that, that you, know, you see a don't, no concealed carry sign on, on their, their door, because as a business owner, I totally respect that, by the way. If someone has, and you own a business that has an open concealed carry sign, I'll never carry a gun into your business. It's unlikely that I'll come into your business, but, but it, I would never never betray that sign because I think people have a right to do that. But it's always humorous to me to see people that put that sign up and live under the guise that, well, no one's going to rob me now. Because someone's going to come in and rob you or hold you up, they're not going to care if you have a sign. You know, the only people that care about that sign are people that have a concealed carry permit. And, and uh, a good example is uh, Shop and Save. Mm -hmm. You know, I went in there with Katie. She likes those uh, Mexican sodas, Jarrito, and they sell them at Shop and Save. So we went there to get a soda, and they had a sign on the door. And I uh, I'd asked the manager of the store about it and told her what I just told you. Hey, you know, in Illinois, you've got to pass this pretty heavy background check. And you got to have the same training fundamentally that a police officer has as far as the performance. You know, people that are carrying concealed are not your problem in the store. And all you're really doing is hanging a sign saying nobody here is armed. And she called corporate. Next time we went in, the sign was down. They said, you're right. It doesn't make any sense. And I think you're seeing more and more businesses do that. If they can. Some businesses sell more alcohol than what they legally can, and they cannot allow concealed carry within their business. Others, you know, some people just have a legitimate problem with it. Uh, there's a Circle K gas station in Cotton Chills. They've got a no-carry sign up. Not all Circle Ks do just that one because the owner is opposed to it. I told her respect. You know, I just don't go to that gas station anymore. And my point in that is not me sharing my political viewpoint. My point is, as a business owner, if you choose to not let people carry firearms in your business, 
fundamentally you're going to hurt your business. Because there are, there are people out there who do not go to the business because of that. I've got an app on my phone that I can pull up by zip code every gun-friendly business in the area and every unfriendly gun friendly business in the area. So if I go to a new area, all I have to do is type in the city or the zip code, and I can find places to eat <coughs> that are friendly to concealed carry. I can find places that are not. If I run across one that uh, is, is, is maybe has a sign and didn't know it, I can put that right in my phone right there as I walk away, and it goes into the database for the next guy. And so there are a lot of people out there who hold to that as business owners, something to consider, something we had to consider as a church. Where I go to church, are we going to let people carry a gun here or are we not? What do you do? They, they, had cho they chose to elect to uh, not put up a sign because we didn't want to turn anybody off on the church. And our mindset was anybody that's going to carry a gun in the church is going to do it whether they have a sign or not. Unless you have metal detectors and you're going to check people at the door. It's just <coughs> nothing else really is fundamentally going to work. And this is the decision process we have to go through. Uh, my advice to you, should you pursue getting a concealed carry permit, would be to make sure that you talk to your instructor, your potential instructor. Ask him what his credentials are as a shooter. Make sure he knows what he's doing. Make sure he's going to be able to teach you something. Um, someone says they were you know, an instructor for 15 or 20 years, and I've been doing this a long time, little blue lights go off in your head. That, okay, this is fluff. This is hoopla. I want to see the beaten potatoes. Why do you know how to shoot a gun? Ask them the question. Why, why can you teach me this? And then, two, go to someone that's going to, going to, get to tell you the truth. You know, I, I, I'm someone that likes to stay in the middle. You know, I, I don't like to just try to sell my viewpoint. There, are, Everybody has a different viewpoint. There's almost always truth in a little bit of everything. And the fact is, when you strap on a gun or you have people carry guns in your, <coughs> in your church or anywhere, there's a degree of risk. Bottom line, there's always a degree of risk. Someone's carrying a loaded firearm. The question is mitigating that risk. What is a greater risk? That something, there's going to be some incident with this person with this firearm, or that someone else is going to come in or do something that this firearm could stop. And it's all about risk mitigation. And I think that that's what has to be weighed out when you make these decisions, either personally or professionally, within your business. Talk to your insurance company. You know, potentially look at some other companies that provide uh, insurance for you know, concealed carry and or for businesses that allow it to make sure that you're protected there. It's not terribly expensive. I think you can get personal insurance for like $9.99 a month. And you can guarantee so much money in a retainer or anything else that you have to use your gun. Um, but these are the things that we want to look at as individuals. Uh, if you decide you want to use something for all your employees at work, you know, I, uh, my partner that I work with is a unique individual. Um, Cephas, you know, worked from, he was in, worked in the intelligence in the Army and worked for Blackwater for about five years overseas. And he's the only person that I know that's ever been in a gunfight. You know, so when he tells you something, you might want to just shut up and listen. <laughs> because everybody else likes to talk real big. You know, you, you see all the instructors that wear all the tactical cool stuff, and, but they never fired a gun at anybody in their life, and they've never been shot at. When you got a guy that's been in gunfights, you might want to listen to him when he tells you something. And and Cephas is just, he's doing a class uh, here at the end of the month for somebody <coughs> over in Cahokia, it's a trucking company, and they're, they're having all their employees go through the concealed carry class. You know, maybe that's something you look at doing. You know, it's, 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 it's for you, your employees, or the people that work with you. Uh, I talked to a lady that, uh, I don't want to give you any names, uh, she works at a bank. They have absolutely a no carry policy at the bank where she works, but her boss came to her and said, I'd really like you to carry a gun to work. Even though it's a company policy, I'm giving you permission to carry a gun to work. And these things, these, these things play, take place.